<laughs> hey you guys welcome to real life cooking with chef lean that's me festive holiday last episode of the season i'm just getting instagram started over here um you know you can watch every sunday 7 p.m on facebook and instagram uh chef lean is my instagram handle if you don't know that welcome instagram hey guys uh welcome to real life cooking with chef lean today it's all about pasta seafood cajun seafood pasta and of course we're going to top it off with a lovely cocktail it's aren't you glad it's christmas time oh i know it's very clever thank you very much um if you're cooking along um this is the show where you can buy your ingredients ahead of time cook along with me i know you're really excited i know um gretchen is at home cooking along at least she told me she was on instagram um and courtney i know you're cooking along if you are cooking along um, make sure to have a pot of boiling water on um, because we're gonna boil some pasta so we want to make sure that that's on I don't want to trick you I already have a pot that's kind of boiling let's check it out see how it's going back there oh yeah it's boiling awesome ready to go but before we cook our pasta because I want to cook my pasta so it's ready at the same time as my whole sauce um, today we're making Cajun seafood pasta which is very very easy to make um, we're just gonna prep a few things before we actually start cooking anything it's one of the few times that I don't go back and forth while I'm doing um, certain things so let's go ahead and bring over all of our ingredients for our Cajun seafood pasta welcome if you're just joining on Instagram real life cooking with chef Lee the show where you can cook along and ask all your culinary questions um, TT Lyle is on the ones and twos uh, texting or reading your questions and comments and she will relay them to you uh, or to me not to you you guys are at home um, all right so let's go ahead and get started I'm just gonna bring over my ingredients from my Cajun seafood pasta. I have a shallot, I have a red bell pepper, I have some andouille sausage. Uh, what else do we have? We have um, our scallops, we have shrimp here that are already clean and deveined. Um, we have our Cajun seasoning. Today I'm using, uh, shout out to my chef mentor, Ryan. He has a special blend that you can actually buy on Amazon. He's from New Orleans, great chef. Um, so I'm going to be using his actual seasoning, Cajun seasoning rub. Um, also, we are going to use some nice fresh herbs. We're going to use some thyme, some basil, we'll get to those a little later, and some parsley. And last but not least, we have our Parmesan cheese and our heavy whipping cream. But before we get started, um, we're going to go ahead and, or not before we get started, as we get started, the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and chop up some of our sausages. So there's five here in this pack. I don't need all five. I'm probably gonna use two, maybe three. Um, I teach you looks hungry today <laughs> and Chris is home. <laughs> so um, andouille sausage is actually, it was invented in France and like most sausages, it was actually, uh, sausage was used to make, to use, uh, to use up all the bad parts of the meat that you wouldn't necessarily wanna eat. like the intestines and livers and all those things and they would just chop it up that sounds really delicious right nowadays sausages are always made like that um, but andouille sausages actually originated in France what I'm gonna do is just cut my sausages in half and then I'm going to cut them into long strips and I'm gonna cut them into like a small dice so I just want to get them just like this first and I'm going to just dice them up here just like so and I want to go ahead and get my um, pan started. I want to start heating that up on a medium heat because uh, we're going to render some of this fat out of these sausages. Now I actually have, whoop, I have sausages. These are actually chicken andouille sausages, which is really nice. I found them at Whole Foods today, but pork is a traditional meat that is made with andouille sausage. Um, and the French make them, they have, they, it has a blend of wine, pork, spices, and um, they're normally smoked double twice. Um, so that's where they get their nice earthy flavor. And they got more spicy, they originated in France, but they got more spicy when they came to America because people in the Cajun area, Louisiana, um, had to make filler with the ingredients they had on hand. And they had a lot more spicy peppers. So their andouille sausage that we know is a little more spicy than the original French form. So I'm going to, I have a pan heating back here. I want to put in a little bit of olive oil, just a little because some of the fat is gonna render off of the sausages. And I want to just cook my sausages. These are actually fully cooked. I could eat them just like this, 
but I want to cook them so they get some nice brown, some texture, and they're going to start to leave some nice fond in the bottom of our pan. Fond, F-O-N-D, is like the little amazing drippings that uh, food leaves behind, and that's where a lot of your flavor is formed on the base layer of our sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and add these in, and while these are cooking up, I'm just going to cut up my shallot and my red bell pepper. Now shallot, how many times have we cut an onion on the show? So many times. Shallot is a similar thing. It's part of the allium family. And um, so garlic, onions, leeks, shallots, all part of the allium family. Um, we wanna keep this root end intact here. And we're just gonna go ahead and take off that little top part, the little part that looks like a hat, take that part off. And then I'm gonna slice it lengthwise. Remember keeping that root end intact there. Um, if you are just joining us, welcome to Real Life Cooking with Chef Lean. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, culinary or otherwise, please drop them below and our technological guru, TT Lyle, will um, relay them to me. So now I'm just pulling back that first layer of, you don't eat the papery skin of the shallot, obviously, so I'm just going to peel that back. I got a little bit of shallot hair on my cutting board, just want to move that away. And now I'm going to do the same exact way that I cut an onion to cut a shallot. I just want to make a small dice. So I will go horizontally a few times, probably three. This is a really large shallot. And then I'll turn it towards me and I'll run my knife through vertically and then I'll turn it back horizontally and I'll run it through to get a nice medium sized dice here. Quick question. Question. Can you remind everyone why you keep the roof on the shallot? We are keeping the roof end intact because it keeps all those layers. There's all these layers of hide. I'm like an onion, I have many layers. I couldn't help myself, I had to say that. But yes, all the layers inside, um, if you cut off this root end, they're just gonna fall apart and make it a lot harder to cut your shallot. Um, shallots are really nice because they have a little less intense of a flavor than an onion. Onions can be very astringent and sharp. Normally, when you're cutting shallots, you're not going to be crying. So I'll just cut this up here. Our sh shallot sausages are popping in the back, so I just wanna give those a stir. Because I don't want them to burn, I just want them to get some nice color and release their juices into my pan here. Alright, I'm going to move this to the side. And now I'm going to take my bell pepper, I want to give it a rinse off. I just bought it. This is real life, I try not to prep anything too far in advance to show you that you can do this in your own home. It's very, very simple. Um, you might not want to wear a giant sweater where you're pulling up all the time like I am, but I had to be festive, of course, people. All right, so cutting a bell pepper is something that's a little tricky to cut. We want to go ahead and take off the top of that bell pepper. You have the little seeds inside. These are not edible. You want to go ahead and remove that. Sometimes it's easier than other times. And then just make sure all those little seeds are out. I actually heard of someone getting really sick from eating these seeds. Um, I don't know if it's like a thing or not, but. All right, and then once we have this, we want to cut off the other bottom end so you can like see through it here. And then we're gonna go ahead and slice it open. So we pull, we make like a large flat surface, right? These will be like for snack later, or you could cut them up too. And then the last thing I wanna do before I dice up my pepper is just go ahead and remove these ribs. So I'm just gonna hold it down and remove these ribs. These are totally edible, but it kind of just makes for a nicer presentation if you take them off. Now we have this nice, easy flat surface and we can just cut any size that we want. So I'm gonna cut, probably about the same size as my shallot. So I'm gonna cut long strips just like this. And then what I'll do once I have those long strips is I'll put my planks together and I'll make my dice. I don't know if I'll need all of this either. This is really just to add color and it's not gonna add so much flavor necessarily. Um, so yeah, feel free to snack on if you feel like you have a little bit too much or you had a really big bell pepper. All right. My sausages are screaming back here. They're getting some nice color, but not burning. Yum, delicious. I'm using chicken andouille sausage, but you can use any kind of um, andouille sausage you would like. And then, as you can see, I just took my little planks and I'm making a nice fine dice of my bell pepper. It's nice if everything is kind of the same size. I mean, you don't have to take every single one and cut it. Um, if you're learning how to chop and you want to be a better chopper, I don't know if that's a word, I get, it is, but um, you can uh, actually, yeah, just use a couple of them at a time instead of trying to do the most and like, because you're not going to get as even as a cut. 
if you're doing a lot at a time, unless you are an expert like me, of course. You know, I've been doing this quite some time now. All right, so we have our bell pepper and our shallot here. That's ready to go. And I just want to remove my sausages from back here because I don't want them to overcook. So I'm just going to take them out and put them on a plate here, trying to keep all of that juice that's like bless the pan back here. And now I'm going to lower the heat really quick because I want to talk about my shrimp. So we have our sausages, we have our shallots, we have our bell pepper, and then we have our shrimp. I want to talk about my seafood. My shrimp. Now, normally I say uh, devein your own shrimp at home. I was feeling a little lazy today, so I just got uh, shrimp that were already deveined. Just so that that little part that has the excrements, not so pleasant to eat, you want to make sure you remove that. And I'm gonna leave the tails on because it looks kind of pretty in presentation. It makes it a little difficult to eat, but you know, it's sometimes fun to watch people struggle, struggle as they're eating. Um, the only thing I wanna do to these shrimp, because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sear them so they have some nice texture and color. A lot of times when you make um, pastas like this, you just like kind of throw everything together and let everything cook all together. That's like how you end up with something that's not so interesting because there's like all the things are the same texture. Uh, so I want to cook my shrimp, just sear them. I'm not actually going to cook them all the way through. I'm going to let them slow cook once they're seared off. But to get a sear, we need a nice hot pan. So let me go ahead and turn up my pan again. We need a nice hot pan and we need no moisture on our shrimp. Well, as little moisture as possible. Obviously shrimp are going to have moisture inside of them. But um, you want to try to pat off as much of that moisture as possible. The other thing we want to do to our shrimp is of course season them. Season from high above, sprinkling evenly on all your shrimp. I'm using uh, just regular sea salt. I like kosher salt a lot. Um, it has bigger granules, but it doesn't make things too salty. I mean, unless you add too much salt. Um, but remember, this is just a base layer of flavor. You can pepper them as well if you'd like. I'm just gonna stick with the salt right now. All right, so now I'm gonna put my shrimp into the pan one by one, treating each shrimp with its own dignity that it deserves. <laughs> Um, and once I put them in the pan, I'm not going to move them because if I move them around, move them around, I'm not going to get the color that I actually want. And the whole point is to get the color, that nice crispiness, so there's texture inside of our dish. All right. <clears throat> and the other thing that I want to make sure that you don't do at home is overcrowd your pan. If you overcrowd your pan, that's going to prevent, that's going to have steam, which is going to prevent that color. Question. Question. Do you have any suggestions on how to get moisture out of frozen shrimp? How to get moisture out of frozen shrimp. So I would suggest um, the way to defrost your frozen shrimp actually is to run it under cool water and then just maybe lay them out on paper towel and let them sit there for like 10 to 15 minutes. If it makes you feel better, you could pop them in the fridge and let them sit in the fridge. Uh, you, seafood is definitely something you don't want to leave out. Um, but you could 10 to 15 minutes sitting out um, on paper towels that should like help draw out some of that moisture. That's also a really good technique, like if you're um, doing tofu, you always want to drain your tofu on some paper towels before you cook it. Because I know everyone's eating tofu at home, you guys, right? Yeah. Yum. All right, so I want to show you my pan. This is like just enough shrimp in here. I don't want to overcrowd because again, steam is the opposite of what we're trying to create here because then we won't get that nice texture and color. While my shrimp are cooking, we're getting some nice color on them. I'm gonna open up my scallops. Let's talk about our scallops. I asked you to get bay scallops, and then of course, Whole Foods didn't have bay scallops. Bay scallops are different than your regular scallops that you're probably used to. Those big, the big ones that I have. I don't like. I have the in between scallops here. It's very strange. They're like medium, medium, medium scallops here. <laughs> they're not really bay scallops, and they're not really like the giant big ones. Um, but what I want to do with these is lay these out on some paper towel too so they can um, reduce some of that moisture as well. Scallops are something that you definitely want to go to a reputable fishmonger for um, because good scallops are good and bad scallops are really bad. They're not just bad, they're really bad. Um, so definitely spend the extra money to get where, wherever you need to get your good scallops from, definitely you wanna um, make sure you pick them up from a reputable place. Um, scallops, 
why I asked you to get bay scallops is because we were going to just mix it in at the end and let this hot sauce cook the scallops. But now um, we're actually gonna have to sear these bigger scallops because I want to get that nice texture as well. So I want to take out my shrimp over here. They should have some, yep, some nice color on them. And they're not cooked all the way through. You're like, what are you doing? You're taking out half cooked shrimp. But like I said, we're gonna let the sauce finish cooking this shrimp. We just wanted to get some nice texture on the shrimp so they're not just mushy cooked in our sauce shrimp. Don't worry, we're going to finish cooking these. I'm just putting these on the plate with my sausage back here. This pan is not the best for searing. It's like a fake good pan that I got at Marshall's. What's the best pan for searing? Um, a cast iron skillet is really good for sealing. Anything that has a very heavy bottom is a good pan for sealing. Now, my shrimp absorbed all that oil, so I want to add a little bit more oil um, to continue searing off some of my seafood. Let's go ahead and add in my other shrimp. Remember, you want your pan to be very hot. There's a nice fawn developing from the shrimp. All right, I'm going to remove this. Again, what we want to do with our scallops, we want to season them with some salt, just from high above. You want to season your scallops right before you're going to cook them because once you put this salt on your scallops, actually anything, it's going to start drawing out some of the moisture within the protein. And the longer they sit, the more moisture you're going to get. All that moisture you're trying to remove is going to end up happening or end up coming back. So you want to season your scallops and then go ahead and put them in your pan. Again. Don't move your scallops. Like it's really important something. People, a lot of people are thrown off by the texture of scallops because although they can be like nice and buttery and delicious, some people find them mushy. And if you get that nice hard sear on the top, they're gonna be a lot more delicious. Yes, question. Yes, how can you tell if seafood is fresh? How can you tell if seafood is fresh? That's a great question. Um, it doesn't smell. It's not gonna be slimy. Like if your seafood is slimy, that's a sign of it's not good. Um, and it's gonna smell like the ocean. It's not gonna smell like the gut, like 116th Street. <laughs> um, and yeah, slime, and whenever you are, that's a great question too, because when you are working with seafood, if you're not using frozen seafood, um, you wanna cook the seafood the day you buy it. You don't, seafood's not one of those things you wanna like buy a bunch of and then cook it three days later, because it literally will just go bad within a day. Um, and if you're keeping something like scallops in your fridge, you want to put them on like a layer of ice so they're nice and nice and cold the whole time they're in your fridge. All right, now that I have nice fishy hands, let me rinse off my hands. And this is something that you want to watch, but again, don't move around too much. Go ahead and take out some of my shrimps that are done back here. If you are just joining us, welcome to Real Life Cooking, where I make a meal from start to finish in just under an hour. I bet you could do it even faster at your house if you're not listening and talking to me. Talking to me. All right, shrimp are done. I'm going to go ahead and put in my other scallops. Again, I'm not cooking my seafood all the way through because once I make my sauce, it's going to help finish cooking the seafood. And it's going to be nice and flavorful and not overcooked and mushy and everything's gonna be have its own flavor, its own part of the process. Just put the last few scallops in. Scallops in general are very quick cooking. Um, it should only take about, if you're cooking these all the way through, just cooking scallops, you'd only need about maybe four minutes on each side, depending on the size of your scallops. And again, it's not something you want to overcook because they can be get, become very rubbery. So you want to make sure you're watching your scallops. Now, while our scallops are finished cooking, or not finished cooking, but while they're cooking, I want to go ahead and start my thyme simple syrup. So I'm just going to put equal parts sugar and water and some thyme inside of a saucepan and let that reduce. A good amount of time because we want our syrup to be very nice and flavored. So probably about, I'm going to use a half a cup of water and a half a cup of sugar. We're essentially creating a fancy simple syrup that they have in like, you know, those fancy cocktail bars where you spend like $17 for a drink. We're making a $17 cocktail in your own home. Alright, and I'll just put this on. 
to cook on my little bootleg stove, my little pony stove. All right, look at, oh, look at our scallops. They look so good. That is the color we are looking for on that side. Can you guys see? I'm like, it's gonna drop and fall. <laughs> it's gonna fall. Um, I'm gonna flip these over to try to get some of that nice texture on the other side um, because we do want them to be stand on their own and have their own little place. All right. This is a super, super easy meal. Um, and it's very impressive. Like whenever people think of seafood, they think it's hard to make. Um, and then you're gonna put cheese and cream on it. Like how luxurious is that? So good. All right. So if you are just joining us, we are making Cajun seafood pasta. So far I've chopped up a shallot, I've chopped up a red bell pepper, I've sauteed my Cajun, um, my andouille sausage, and I've sauteed my, or not sauteed, I've seared my shrimp. The shrimp are not all the way cooked through, they're gonna finish cooking in my sauce. I have my scallops going, and I also have a pot of boiling water, which I'm now going to remove the lid. Oh. And pasta cookery. One time I saw a friend, this was a long time ago, but they made pasta by like putting water and then putting their pasta inside and bringing the water to a boil. Don't ever do that. Do not ever do that. You always want to, so you're going to end up with like gummy, starchy, just not, don't do that, please. You want to start with a good amount of water, about four liters per pound of pasta. And the other thing that you really want to make sure that you do when you're cooking pasta is salt your water. Like, I'm going to put in this obscene amount of salt and you guys are going to be like, oh my gosh, my blood pressure. But... The salt is very diluted in the water, and pasta doesn't have any flavoring besides, it's just egg and flour. So there's not really a lot of flavor in the pasta, so you really need all of the salt in that water. And the salt is not going to translate, let me just go ahead and remove my scallops. I need another plate. The salt is not going to translate into your pasta, like it's not going to end up being, it's just going to end up being flavor, not saltiness. All right, so there are our scallops, nicely colored. I have my thyme simple serve going for my cocktail. Aren't you glad it's Christmas time? Oh, so cool. Um, and I just salted my water for my pasta. So I'm gonna start on my sauce before I put in my pasta. Because again, I told you I want everything to be done around the same time. So I'm gonna put in the pasta when I'm about 10 minutes out of being done with the whole dish. I'm just gonna add in my shallots and my bell pepper. And I wanna saute these until they get kind of translucent. Um, it's gonna start to be fragrant and smell really nice in here. It would help if the stove is on. Fire always helps when you're cooking. And these we can stir around because I'm not really trying to get any color on them necessarily. I just want them to become soft and start releasing some of their more mellow flavors. As onions and alliums cook, they become sweeter and de have a depth of flavor inside of them. That's really great. The other thing I want to do, I'm not going to do that. That's like dangerous. I never recommend um, just pouring your seasonings into your pot because if you put too much, then you're kind of screwed. So um, you always want to control control what you can because there's a lot of stuff in life you can't control. Control your seasonings. So we're going to just sprinkle in some salt. And what the salt does not only adds a base layer of flavor, it's gonna help draw out some of the moisture from our red bell pepper and our um, shallot, which is gonna help them make get nice and tender. All right, so we have our thyme simple syrup working, half parts, equal parts sugar and water, some sprigs of thyme, that's gonna give it a nice herbaceous flavor. We have our Cajun pasta going with our, um, our shallots and our red bell peppers. I just wanna move them around a little bit. I'm gonna add just a pinch more oil to this because I'm gonna add my Cajun seasoning and I want it to bloom in the oil. Blooming is not just for flowers, it's for spices too. It helps bring out all that flavor in your spice. So if you actually toast up your spice in a little bit of oil before, it's gonna be much more flavorful than if you just pour it in at the end. So I'm gonna add a pinch more oil. You could also use butter if you really wanna be decadent. Just a little bit. And I'm gonna add in my Cajun seasoning. Cajun seasoning. There's so many different varieties. There's probably, probably could have arguments about what's the best one. Today I'm using my Chef Friends Ryan's. You can actually buy this on Amazon. 
Um, he's from New Orleans, so I feel like he's an expert, and I know him, so cool. Um, but Cajun seasonings normally are a blend of paprika, white and black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, thyme, and oregano. Um, Creole seasonings actually have oregano more than Cajun, just because of the access of like where Creole people and Cajun people live um, is a little bit, so they have a little bit more oregano. So if you can't find Cajun seasoning and you have a very well stocked spice cabinet, Go ahead and just mix a little blend of all those things. All right, I'm gonna add in a generous amount of Cajun seasoning because it's Cajun seafood pasta. I want it to have nice, good flavor in there. And I'm just gonna let it toast around, toast around, get married and nice and happy with my shallots and red bell pepper. How's it smelling in here? Ladies? It smells really great. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> And this is the part you don't want to rush. I don't want to start adding things in until my onions are nice and translucent and like soft and look good. Um, because this is where our layer of flavor, we're developing layers of flavor. And if we skip, we rush this part, or the depth of flavor is not going to be there. So want to make sure that that's happening and getting nice and happy together and stirring it from time to time. Now let's talk about our pasta. So we salted our big pot of water. The water is boiling and we're going to be using linguine. Now, it doesn't matter honestly what kind of pasta you use when you're making this. Um, I like linguine because it's a little thinner than fettuccine. Fettuccine is kind of thick. I feel like it's a little bit more elegant. Um, I do like the long, like long flat pasta for this because it kind of holds that sauce and like makes it, it just makes it a little more elegant than if you use like bow tie pasta. But if that's what you have, no, no judgments here. Um, how much pasta do you want to cook? This is a package for how many people? Eight. This is this is eight servings. That's it's probably more like twelve servings. Or <laughs> Chris is over here rubbing his belly. Maybe I should cook the whole package. Um, but remember, you have all the seafood. You want the seafood to shine. You don't want your pasta to overtake your whole dish. You want the seafood. You don't want to be like eating at a restaurant when they they offer you shrimp pasta and then you have like two little shrimp and like a big mound of pasta. You want the seafood to be the star of this dish. So not too much pasta. I'm just gonna throw this into my boiling water. Make sure it's boiling. Um, and we're not gonna add any oil. You may have seen the misconception where people put oil into their pasta water. That is like such an unnecessary step. You don't need to do that at all. Um, you just need to make sure that your water is heavily salted. And as you can see, it's like hanging out the side of my pan. So what I'm gonna do for that is as the pasta gets softer, ideally you'd want your pasta to be in the pan the whole time. But as my pasta gets softer, I'm just gonna gently nudge it into the pan. It's not really that big of a deal. See, look, it already, it already fit in. There we go. We have now, a question. question. Question, a question from Robert and Leah Ford. When are you coming to cook in Jacksonville? <laughs> um, you know, I think I might be there for the draft, right? <laughs> um, we gotta get some of your the, the, we gotta get some of your uh, Louisiana tips on there, uh, cause you know I'm a fake I'm fake Cajun right now. I'm just showing you the methods and techniques to make uh, a good Cajun meal, Cajun fusion we'll call it. Ooh, my onions and my bell peppers are looking so good right now. They're nice and soft. They've definitely changed in color a little bit, and it smells so good. So now this could not be easier. What am I gonna do? I'm going to pour in a whole carton of heavy cream. <laughs> now, heavy cream is great for pasta sauces um, because it has that fat content, and as it reduces, which means it just gets more concentrated in flavor, it's actually gonna become thick like a sauce. Like, we don't even have to do anything. We just have to pour it in there. Um, so I'm just gonna let that reduce for maybe like five to seven minutes, as, as long as I'm talking to you. Um, if you've seen in the store, so this is very confusing. You've seen whipping cream, heavy cream. This is heavy whipping cream. This like blows my mind today. Because heavy cream, heavy cream is best for dishes like this because it has the highest fat content. It has 36% fat. Where whipping cream only has like 30 to 36% um, fat content. So what that higher fat content is going to do is gonna help your fat reduce, your sauce reduce, your fat, <laughs> your, your sauce reduce without curdling. Um, so, if you're not an avid cook, you definitely want to go for the heavy whipping cream, make it foolproof for yourself. Um, so heavy cream has more fat. It's much more stable than um, whipping cream. 
but it also has five more calories per serving than your uh, whipping cream. But who cares? We're eating seafood pasta. It's, it's the holidays, people. Like, don't, don't. Let's not think about the <laughs> question. How many servings is this dish for normal people? For normal people, this is probably about six servings. Um, for the people in my house right now, it's probably like one. And we're gonna be fighting over it right now. Um, but no, like six servings is uh, about how much we're gonna be making for this. So we're letting our cream reduce. We have our, our shallots, our red bell peppers, our Cajun seasoning in there. Um, we're letting our heavy cream reduce in this pot. We have our pasta cooking back here. I wanted to talk just a little bit about pasta cookery. So the other thing that you wanna do with your pasta is stir it from time to time. That is what's going to help it prevent from sticking, not oil in your pot. But you definitely wanna make sure it's very, very heavily salted. It should taste like the ocean water. Um, and you always want to cook your pasta just under the amount of time that it says on the that it says on the dish. What's happening, you guys? Oh, everyone's like, <laughs> is there a ghost coming in our house? I have a question. Question. When was the first time you tasted ocean water? Um, you've never tasted ocean water. <laughs> you've never been swimming in the waves and been like, oh, gross. Yeah, that's. I was like, you know, I was very young. A very young lad <laughs> no i was never a boy but i was yes ocean water i tasted it's before. very salty <laughs> very salty um but yeah we want to stir it and we always want to cook it just under the amount the time on your package says remember recipes are guidelines even the box can be wrong sometimes um because you don't want it to be like mushy and chewy you want it to be nice and al dente and we're going to add it into our hot sauce which is going to continue to cook the pasta too so we don't want our pasta to be overcooked before we even put it in our sauce all right so while those things are going, let's move these things out of the way. And I want to chop up some of my fresh herbs for this dish. We have some basil. We have some parsley that I need to rinse off because it's sandy. And, and we have some thyme, of course. Nothing but thyme on our hands today. Oh my gosh, all these corny jokes. You have a question. Question. Two questions. Two questions. Um, first question from Johanna. Do you have any tips for working around people with seafood allergies? Um, and so not for this dish, but for other dishes. Um, tips for working around people with seafood allergies. Don't cook seafood around people with <laughs> seafood allergies. <laughs> that is a good tip. Um, it is also really important when you're cooking for people uh, to ask and be aware of people's allergies before you're going to make something that is going to, you know, potentially hurt them or kill them. Um, the other thing about allergies is you really need to understand how intense the allergy is. Some people can't even be in the same room as seafood. So, you know, just don't invite them though for dinner this day. Is that is that you, Johanna? Are you allergic to seafood? Are you asphyxiated over there? Sometimes I do throw up, but not, I won't throw up. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a few leaves of basil. I have some parsley here as well. And I want to also grab some thyme. Now thyme, they, Whole Foods is really like playing me today. They didn't have any thyme, but you know what they did have is poultry seasoning, which has thyme in it. Um, poultry seasoning is rosemary, sage, and thyme. I'm just gonna use the, or the thyme today. And what I wanna do with my thyme is make sure I pull it off this woodsy stem. This is like not really edible and not really good. So I wanted to take off all these little leaves I'm gonna use maybe about four, four stalks, I guess, is this called a stalk? Four little things of thyme. Imagine like if this was your job at a restaurant and you had to like make a big quart, quart container of this. Sometimes I like think about how mundane tasks at restaurants are. I'm very grateful I don't work at one anymore. <laughs> was that ever your time? No, but I really hated peeling eggs. Oh my gosh, it was the worst. I used to have to peel like I don't even remember. Peeling eggs and what was the other thing? Were they hot? Yeah, they were boiled eggs because they went in salads. So yeah, it was the worst. All right, so chopping up our herbs. I want to bunch them all together as much as possible. <laughs> so I'm gonna put all of these together, bunch them, roll them kind of into like a little ball. And then I'm gonna take my knife and very closely put these little slice them together this is a much more effective method than just haphazardly hacking at your herbs because you see how small they are already it'll be much easier for me 
to make them into pieces that won't get stuck in my teeth. What is so funny over there? Would you like me to tell you what's going on? Yes. Okay. Uh, Johanna said it's like an herb blunt. It's like a what? Herb an herb blunt. Oh, yes, it is an herb blunt. Not that I would know anything about that. I just grew up in California. All right. So we want to chop these up. We don't want to chop them into herb mush, um, but we want them to be in a nice, I always say small enough so that if it got in your teeth, it wouldn't be too embarrassing. Um, but you don't want that green lawnmower stain on your cutting board when you're done. All right, perfect. So we have our basil, our thyme, and our parsley nice and chopped up. Let's move this out of the way. The last thing that we need to do, I'm gonna just check my pasta because it's back here doing its thing. The best way to check your pasta is honestly to just take one and taste it and see how it's going. If it's chewy, throw it against the wall. I'm not done, not done yet. <laughs> um, also, I wanted to show you our sauce is nice and reduced back here, or it's getting nice and bubbly. Cream is one of those things that will boil over and make a giant mess, so just be aware of that. Don't walk away from this. And it's getting, it's getting nice and thick. I want to show you. Oh, we don't have any spoons. I wonder why. Because we were eating soup all week. <laughs> They're all dirty. This is clean. The dishwasher's clean. Um, so you can see the sauce is getting kind of thicker. It's coating the back of the spoon now. Um, and that pasta was not ready, by the way. It's a little chewy. So while that is going, I want to just grate some cheese. Now I want to take this moment to tell you probably whatever Parmesan cheese you think you've been eating, you have not been eating real Parmesan cheese. The only way, so Parmesan cheese is actually regulated in Europe um, and the only place it can really come from is Italy, like this like specific regions in Italy, like not just Italy in general, like specific regions. And um, it's aged for two years, like a long process of how they make it in like big giant barrels. And um, it's made from happy cows. The cows only are grass fed. They're like very happy and chill cows. Not, cows. Um, not, not our American cows that are sad driving by on the uh, five freeway in California. Mm. Um, and it has real Parmesan cheese has like a fruity, almost nutty taste. And it has like these little crystals in it. Like you might think your cheese is bad, but this is actually really good. There's a lot of flavor inside of these things. And real Parmesan cheese, I don't want this to over reduce. So I'm going to turn this off. Real Parmesan cheese is stamped. Like once the person has tasted it and like they approve of it, they actually stamp it and it will say like Parmesan Reggiano on the back. Um, so if your cheese does not say Parmesan Reggiano, it is fake Parmesan cheese. Um, so yeah, really try to look for real Parmesan cheese. It does make a huge difference in whatever you're making. And if you're gonna eat cheese, you might as well eat the best quality that you can. I'm just going to um, grate some of this cheese. And the cheese that doesn't pass the test in Italy, they actually don't even like, they used to just um, cross out the label, but now they like remove the label completely. So they're really serious about their cheese. So you should be serious uh, too. Our Instagram, oh, hey Instagram, sorry, it was paused because of bad connection, but you're back. All right, so if you're just joining us, we're making Cajun pasta, Cajun seafood pasta. Um, we have some chopped herbs here that we're gonna finish it off with, and I'm grating some cheese. Now, how much cheese, it's totally up to you. I'm a cheese lover, so I'm probably, this is almost like a half a cup here, and I'll probably put more on top at the end, just shaving it down. Um, also, interesting fact about Parmesan cheese, it's like a huge thing of organized crime in Italy, and actually, like, between the years of 2015 and, like, 2017, 2,093 cheese barrels were, like, stolen and, like, st sold on the black market. So it's like, they're really serious about cheese, so we should be serious, too. Yes, question. We have a question. Where's the best place to buy... Parmesan cheese. The best place to buy Parmesan cheese, um, I mean, any grocery store should have it. You just, again, you want to look for that label, this rind. Another cool thing about Parmesan cheese is this rind, you might think you just want to throw it away. But you can actually throw it into like soups and it will give it nice, good flavor. Um, but yeah, any grocery store should have it, but just be weary that it has this um, label on the back. And it's, if it's like wrapped in green packaging, it's probably not real Parmesan cheese. And it tastes completely different than uh our sad American cow cheese. Um, all right, so let's check our pasta back here because we have all of our components ready. I don't think my pasta is ready yet. Let's taste it. What's in the green can that's not Parmesan cheese? I don't know, a lot of preservatives. 
I haven't used I haven't used I haven't eaten that stuff in so long. So this is just a little bit al dente. Um, so I'm gonna let it go just a couple more minutes. Let's test it against the wall. Mm, it's still gonna stick. Almost, almost there. Um, what I am gonna do is remove my thyme syrup. So we created, we're making a orange you glad it's Christmas time cocktail. Um, so what we did was create our own simple syrup at home. I've talked about this before, how you can make simple syrups out of any kind of herb. Um, it's really easy. You just boil equal amounts of sugar and water with the herb. The longer you let it sit, the more flavor it's gonna be. You can let these sit in your fridge for like a month because it's just sugar and water and it won't go bad. Um, you just want to remove whatever you put in it. Like you don't want it to let it sit inside that syrup. Question. What? Oh, no question. Just kidding. All right. So this is going to be used for our cocktail. I want to um, actually bring over all those ingredients for our cocktail while our pasta is continuing to cook. It's almost done. I'm gonna just remove my cutting board. And this is a great trick at home too. I normally put a wet paper towel underneath my cutting board so it doesn't slide around and it makes it a lot safer for me to um, cook or cut. All right, so for our cocktail, we are gonna be using Tito's vodka. Use any kind of vodka you want. <laughs> What's the best vodka? What's your favorite vodka? I have a favorite vodka. Vodka is not really my thing. I do like vodka in mixed drinks. Um, I like tequila. Christmas is coming. <laughs> What's your favorite tequila? Uh, my favorite tequila would be called Tres Generaciones, um, introduced by my Uncle Flip. It's very, very good, very drinkable just by itself. Um, all right, so I want to bring over, I have ginger beer, I have some tangerines. Actually, I'm going to need a cutting board. Let's get a new one. Let's bring out my fancy wooden cutting board with the Rubber, rubber things in the back. All right, we have orange juice, we have our cocktail shaker. If you don't have one of these, like don't worry, you just put it in a glass and stir it around. Um, we have our lemons, our lemon juice. And, is that it? Yes, oh and our thyme syrup. So, what we're going to do, if you would like to measure, I have the exact me measurements on the, on the ingredient list that I gave you. Um, but essentially, we're going to put equal parts of orange juice and vodka. <laughs> Not really. You don't want to put equal parts. Um, you want to put just a little bit more orange juice. So I'm going to use maybe, this is about three ounces. I'm going to use about six ounces of orange juice. Maybe five. That was like a little bit less. Um, I'm going to put in my vodka. I'm only going to put one. This is a double shot, but I'm going to use one full thing of vodka. And I'll put my ginger beer in last. I want to put in lemon for sure. Lemon really helps bring out um, the flavors of all your things that you're using. Again, when you're cutting your citrus fruit, you want to cut it on the sides so you can get the most juice out of it. So just slightly off center so you end up with three pieces. I'll probably use all of this. It doesn't matter if the seed's going because this will strain out later. Everyone got really quiet when I started <laughs> mixing the cocktail. All right, and then you want to start, I'm probably going to use about half of this to start and then see how sweet it is. About a half of a double shot glass there. And then I said you could use orange juice or tangerine juice. I'm going to just cut up some tangerines and like get some of that muddled flavor in there too. These are so cute. It's like one bite tangerines. And then I'm just gonna smush this down together. Real scientific stuff here. <laughs> Real scientific. Oh no, it's not done. Let's check it. Pull out the piece of pasta. I would not recommend touching it straight from, straight from the pot to your hands. <laughs> But my hands are made of steel. This is done now. I can tell just by the way it like hangs a little bit. Yep, perfect. Oh, I didn't throw against the wall. I don't think that's true because this is done. Yeah. I have like five pieces of pasta on the floor now. <laughs> now, um, before I turn, I'm gonna turn off this. Um, but I want to finish this cocktail before I. One thing at a time, people. All right, I'm gonna add some ice to this. 
and then just, you know, shake it up, get really excited. Um, the difference is, uh, if you do have the shaker, it's going to be um, a little less alcoholic in a way because the ice is getting more distributed as opposed to like if you just stirred the cocktail, there's not gonna be as much ice distributed in it. Bring over my very fancy glass and then just go ahead and strain it out. Hopefully it tastes good because I didn't even taste it before I did this. Awesome. It looks like a mimosa, right? We want to just top it so it becomes effervescent with our ginger beer. The difference between ginger beer and ginger ale is ginger beer is going to have a much more spicy, um, strong flavor. Also, it's normally going to be um, less sugar inside. Ooh, look, it's all bubbly. It's also a little less bubbly than ginger ale. It's not as effervescent, but it still gives it a nice little fizz. And, of course, we all know that drinks taste better that are garnished, so I'm going to just slice up a few more of these little tangerines. Or actually, I'm going to do that really cool thing where I just put on the side like that. Look at that. It's like falling off. <laughs> and I'm going to use, instead of ice, which will just dilute our cocktail, I'm going to use some frozen cranberries. So it looks like pretty. Aren't you glad it's Christmas time? So cute. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> cranberries flying everywhere. <laughs> We're just gonna ignore that over there. All right, now let's finish off our pasta. We are almost done, almost time to eat. I know you guys are super excited. I'm excited here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to transfer my pasta directly to my sauce. I'm not even gonna strain it because I want some of that pasta water to get in there because that'll help loosen up my sauce and make it um, a little more starchy. Ooh, there we go. Toss it on over. I do want that water to get in there because that starch from the pasta is going to help thicken up our sauce even more and be more sauce-like. There we go. And now I'm going to throw in all of our seafood that is half cooked and our sausage and the little juices from our scallops back here. That's going to go in. Be very delicious already. I just want to turn on the heat because I'm gonna finish cooking my seafood now in this sauce. Oh my gosh, this oh my is making God. me so excited. Let's see. Everyone's calm What is going on over there? That looks amazing. <laughs> Everyone is drooling over there. <laughs> All right, so we're just heating it through. Our, pot, our seafood is halfway cooked already, so we don't need to like boil it. We don't wanna get our seafood nice and tough, or nice and tough, bad and tough. Bad and tough. We are going to add in our cheese now at this point. Oh, it's like snowing, snowing in our pasta and our chopped up herbs. So we have our parsley, our basil, and our thyme in there. And I just want to rinse off my hands. And of course, the most important part of making anything, you want to taste it before you serve it to people. Because then maybe you might decide you don't want to serve it. You want to keep it all to yourself. So the part, the herbs are adding some nice. The herbs, the herbs are adding um, not just color because it is kind of a monotonous dish, um, but it adds that nice flavor, that fresh flavor that's really going to make a difference in your final product. Fresh herbs are like so important. I think a lot of home cooks skip out on fresh herbs because you don't want to buy them, you don't want to have them in your fridge, but. We just showed you how to make simple syrup, so you can just make fancy cocktails with your herbs. This is like the most difficult way I could try something, but you know. Yeah, yeah no, they're not getting any of this. <laughs> <laughs> You're so good. At this point, if you didn't, let me finish chewing. If you didn't like the flavor, which I don't, you messed up if you don't like the flavor of this, but you can always add in more Cajun seasoning if you want a little more pop. You can also add in some hot chili flakes if you like that flavor as well. But like I said, it's absolutely delicious the way it is. So I am going to plate this up. Mmm, pasta. The way you want to make that nice pretty pasta is you just twist it so you make that nice little nest on your plate. And then you want to make sure you get all that seafood that we cooked individually there. <laughs> So good. 
Make sure you like make everything stand out and like look look like the star that it is. And we want to clean up that plate a little bit. And again, this is kind of like, I mean, we have that green color from the herbs, but to even make it look even more beautiful, you can take just a leaf or two of an herb, stick it on there. There we go. You can always, um, what's it called? Grate more cheese on top, of course. Let, let it snow. Man, I'm like really on the jokes today. Woo. There we go. So there we have our Cajun seafood pasta that is delicious. And all these hungry wolves are staring at me like, oh, can you stop talking Show's so over. we can eat? Show's over. And our, aren't you glad it's Christmas time? Merry Christmas, happy holidays. See you guys next year. Um, real life cooking. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.